I'll tell you another sound. I saw an awful video this weekend. Uh, no j- jokes aside, there was a helicopter parked, and you're and you're looking at it sort of a three quarters angle. It's on the ground, but rotors are spinning. You know, rear and front. Um, what do you call that thing in the back? It's the rear rotor, right? You call it a rotor? Tail rotor, I think. Tail rotor. Thanks. And there's a lot of pe- there's maybe five men there standing around the chopper. Three of them in a group, kind of looking at it. I don't know wh- wh- what's going on, but then this one guy is going to run around behind the helicopter, and he's at a brisk jog. And no one can stop him because the helicopter's so loud. And he runs right into the tail rotor and it goes, Vroom! it sounded like that. It hit him like eight times as fast as you can imagine. Vroom! And he just falls. And it's the video quality isn't good enough to see exactly how bad he was mutilated, but right. he just falls and nobody even goes to help. They just all put their hands on their heads and look away because oh, yeah, he's done. Because he's yeah, done. Yeah. He, he like ran face first into the tail rotor. Yeah, it, like it, just the lapse in judgment. Like he just he didn't know it was there. You can't see it because it's spinning so fast, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you would think you would hear the very loud noise of a, a helicopter going. No, but it's the the top ones. But going. he he assumed it's it was the, the top the one making the one. noise. The like little oh. back one. Okay, I've never been a, a, that close to a helicopter. I have, I assumed it'd never be making been in like a helicopter. A, like it's a good time. It's super mm. noisy. Oh, yeah, you, no, you uh, like a, the helicopter once, dog. like a shuttle at Disney World when I was a kid. <laughs> was really? Like, wait, 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 wait! You took a helicopter at Disney World? Yeah, I think it was. It was in Florida. I don't remember if it was Disney World. There's, I was in a helicopter for some reason. <laughs> no, it was, it was, no, I didn't. It definitely wasn't Disney World because I didn't go there until I was like twelve. I was like six or seven. And I was There's the a back. temporary flight restriction over Disney World that's lasted like forty years. Just that I don't know why they call it a temporary flight restriction, but you can't fly over it. Interesting. Makes sense. You Safety know, concerns, perhaps. You wouldn't roller coasters or something. I, you know, it's a, a it hit, like, the way you guys are know. saying it, it. You're making it seem like it's very easy to walk into the tail rotor of a helicopter, and I don't believe that. Like, there's no way it's so it is like, invisible because uh, it's spinning. You know, you know, like invisible, like yeah, a fan. Yeah. You know, and uh, the audio cue that you're hoping to pick up on. Well, the whole area is so noisy and windy. And you're kind of in a hurry to leave the area, right? You're trying to get away from the noise and the wind and the top thing. And well, I didn't walk into the back of it in any of my helicopter Fuck flights. No. I can imagine that somebody would. You know, it's that scary. It, people are stupid. It's There are some people walking around who are just barely able to do that. And asking more of them <laughs> than that is, uh, is, too, is, is a bridge too far, which is one of my favorite expressions. I think that a bridge too far comes from um, maybe uh, D-Day during the Allied invasion. I think they dropped paratroopers in to take these bridges, and uh, there's and they went a bridge too far. I suppose was the expression, a and dangerous. lost a lot of men. Yeah, go, it, we pushed just a little bit ahead of uh, you know our means. I buy that. I had a a fan land in my front yard with his helicopter and then take me for to lunch and. Uh, he also spent a lot of time teaching me how the helicopter works. <sighs> Some people aren't smart enough to know how helicopters work. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, I didn't, are you one? Are, are you one of them? Or it's, it's I, I, a good chance, yeah, that maybe I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah. How does, how does a turbine engine work exactly? Like, it's it's an engine that only works. It, you can't start it unless the engine's already started. This baffles me. Like, you, you can't light it. It has to already be lit, and then it keeps going perpetually. How does it turn off? Turbine engines that don't make any sense to me. I don't get it. And There's then he gets somewhere. And then he says, Woody, it's like a Bunsen burner. Oh, sure. Like, okay. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand how a Bunsen, Bunsen burner is about to make us fly. Yeah. So you have it hooked up to, pro- there's a propane gas flame, like a flamethrower <laughs> that keeps it stoked. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how a turbine, turbine engine works engine. either. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I know the helicopters are fucking cool. To- I've been in uh, a hot air balloon. I, I did that as a, as a kid. Uh, we went to uh, up to Pigeon Forge or Gatlinburg and one of those cheesy vacations and went on a ride. And uh, I went, um, I've done multiple helicopters. I've done the big helicopters and the little ones. Uh, the R, Robinson 22s and 44s, I think, is, is what they are. The 22 is famous for being the world's most dangerous helicopter, the one responsible for the most deaths and traumatic injuries. Cool. In part because it is a dangerous helicopter, but mostly because it is the most affordable, reliable helicopter in that genre. It's like, if I don't know the, the the Toyota Camry had the most deaths in it, it's like Jesus. Everybody has one, of course. Yeah. I also, bet most drownings happen at pools. It's really mm-hmm. hard to fly. Do you know anything about it? 
So like it, it, if yeah, I gave well, you an Apache, if I gave you, Kyle, an Apache, ooh. I think by this afternoon, you could be flying. I could get some justice finally. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the reason is it like self stabilize It's almost like a drone. You know, you push it forward to go forward, whatever. And it has advanced electronics that handle a lot of shit for you. If yeah, you know how to fly, fly by an Apache, you don't know how to fly a Robinson. But the inverse or the converse is not true. If you know how to fly a Robinson, you can fly fucking anything because that doesn't help you at all. It is constantly trying to tip over and slide into the ground. And you're there mm-hmm. like just balancing a, a quarter on top of a, a I like that though. pencil dot the whole time, just trying to keep it, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up because it always wants to fall and crash to the ground. So that's partly why they're so dangerous. It's always it's pulling in that skill. one direct. It's always pulling in that one direction and, and tilt, trying to tilt. Right. So you've just, you've kind of got that as your zero, I would imagine. And an experienced pilot just lives in that zone perpetually, which you just feel comfortable with after a while, I suppose. Um, but both of the pilots I've had were excellent, I felt, as yeah. far as I'm able to judge a pilot based on their resume and just how they handled themselves and, and the things they were able to do with the, with, the, with the helicopters. My 22 pilot was able to get us, I'm going to call it 30 feet off the ground, traveling as fast. He matched speed perfectly with our pit, the pigs I was shooting, and he flew sideways with my door as the leading edge. So I'm I'm one ass cheek on my seat leaned out and I'm the leading edge of this uh, of our flight path. It was incredible. Um, and then the 44 pilot, I mean, I let him dangle me from a goddamn rope. So I, I trusted him clearly. But the other guy that was there that day, because these are completely separate like shoots, the 44 pilot I had, it was that orange helicopter. He was great. There was a 22 there that day, too, though, with a young pilot in his 20s. And we asked him how many hours he said, you know, what he, when his answer was enough <laughs> the that... other guy had been the other guy was from nam the other guy was an o- old white guy gray hair and a beard like like short short white hair I trust mm-hmm. him and from nam he had flown a, a fucking helicopter the other guy's answer enough he nearly went down he nearly went yeah. down that day yeah at one point he was hovering over an explosive that was on fire and could go off any second and that burst of hot air under his helicopter would have dropped him Mm. What, or Ooh, the, the air's thinner. Oh, yeah. Okay. He he can't get the lift now. He he's, he would drop. It would have been like um if you were to release a huge amount of bubbles underneath a boat. Yeah. Right. It it, it, it would paragliding. It, it, it lifts you because it's rising air. Mm. And there was like this big controversy during a world championship. The yeah. guy was bombing yeah, out, which though. means that he was you know was about to end his flight and not do well. And he found uh, f- uh farmers burning their field. So he goes to this burning field. And starts rising super fast, dangerous. His wings collapsing. The air is turbulent. It's a total fucking mess. It doesn't fly anymore. And he's still gaining altitude. The embers (laughs) start burning holes in his wing. And he is still gaining altitude. Oh, no. He eventually did really well. Like He finished top five in this world championship on his fucking wing with holes all over it. It was ratted and destroyed. He never flew it again, but Mm. it extended his flight. Yeah. Could have died. No, those are really fun to, to, to fly in. Um, I would, if I was going to learn to fly a thing, it seems like, first of all, it seems like the stupidest thing to do. However, it's the worst financial it's decision the, you'll ever make. <laughs> it's the, well, it's the best if you're getting into an aircraft, I think a, a 22, right? Like if you're going to buy a Robinson, uh, if you, if you were going to get into flying around and, and you wanted a, an aircraft, like a thing, you could buy a, a, I bet a, I bet a Robinson 22 is fairly affordable. And, it's the maintenance, right? Like, don't you have to That's do, is it an problem. hour, hour, hour ratio, one to one? I've heard that. I'm, I imagine it varies by aircraft, right? Like, yeah. these military ones are like that. My, uh, when I first started Woodycraft, I had a partner. He was 15 years old and uh, he had like 30% of Woodycraft. He used his money to buy a helicopter. That was his passion. He was just always flying helicopters and, and he took his share of the earnings and bought one. He was only fit. He, you have to be 16 to get a license, but at 15, you can take lessons. Yeah. So he, like, even though he could fly a helicopter and he had something like three or 400 hours of experience, he would just pay an instructor to sit in the other seat so he could fly his personal helicopter around. They took it to Cracker Barrel a lot. That was like <laughs> one of their favorite missions to go get lunch. Do you think you get, all right, we've talked about trying to pull pussy with a car, mm. but man, 
I bet with a could you do it with a helicopter? Could you land your helicopters? I now did definitely at a high school. You Kyle, land your helicopter I at a high school. Pull pussy with any vehicle. <laughs> you name it. A Lamborghini, a Ferrari, I can bring them all back in and razor, razor scooter. Anything. <laughs> I'm just wondering like, like like ladies. I feel like, if a, I feel like I remember a story of like some guy. I can't remember. It's like some famous stories. I'm sure somebody would again somebody tell me in the fucking comments or somebody but there is some famous story about a guy who used to go about like with a helicopter he made like some bet with some guy at a bar um really famous story and then he like started picking up chicks with he it picked or some up girls shit. with a helicopter. Like, landed it in like areas where he shouldn't have and then got massive fines for it fuck i wish i could remember the actual story and it wasn't just mm, in the I, believe that. I wonder what the rules are you would get fined landing yeah hmm. what, what like could you if you really wanted to could you just like find a public field and just land i do there. it with my paramotor like we go to waffle house and shit i think you can i think you can i and here's the thing about lot, though, i really think it's unlikely no not a parking lot well you know this woody it's not like there's air police right so you could probably just do whatever you wanted as long as you didn't fuck up and hit some power lines one day or careen into a house then you're in trouble yeah, I'm, I'm almost my experience has been sometimes people report you to the FAA even falsely. Well, that's <laughs> just that's your unique situation that you have. You know, that's because you're you. You know, I know what that feels like. I got even fly that day. What? Not as bad as you, of course. Mister <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mister Woodworth, we have credible reports that you're going to fly your paramotor into the sixth floor of the Freedom Tower. <laughs> Six floor. Six floor. <laughs> we, fuck you! I could get to the twelfth. <laughs> I'm sure you could. Could you? You could fly over. Him the of course you could. Yeah, I've been to. I've been to twelve thousand. My friends have been to eighteen thousand feet. So the freedom that's Tower so is cool. Seventeen hundred or something. Seventeen seventy six, right? I think I'm not positive. Yeah, yeah. No. I think they went with that. You know, uh, I fly the, higher than that every flight. Makes sense, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, uh, I I think about your... Whenever I talk to my dad, we talk... He's, he's like, if we talk about you, he's like, he's still flying that thing? Because he's always had just a little bit of interest in uh, in those things since we so, we were hunting one time. Someone flew one over us and we were mm -hmm. waving. So they were like doing tricks above us, you know, oh, cool. flying back and forth, sort of putting on a show for us. And so after doing like quick research... Ah, they're like ten or twelve thousand dollars, and we were looking at the trikes. I don't think we knew the other kind existed. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and he was borderline buying one of those things back in the day. He's he like, yeah, we could just build a runway right here in the field. You could. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, like, well, I had the same idea. Oh. I was really tempted to buy one at one point because when I was living not in central London, I was living like out in the countryside, bro. Like, yeah, there's fields everywhere. Just fly wherever you want, Dude, right? I know like six van lifers who have a paramotor. They just drive around and fly into cool places. My um, Acros Club, the the one we launch in Lake Hartwell, mm -hmm. I think we're getting insurance like this week or next week, and maybe two weeks from now the club is back up and running. So, oh, good. Yeah, I didn't know that was a holdup or, or of any kind. Uh, <laughs> In brief, the National Army Corps, or whoever runs the Army Corps of Engineers. Thank you. That's what it is. The Army Corps of Engineers shut us down because they operate the lake we worked out of. And once we assured them we weren't commercial and they just said, we'll get some insurance, which turned out to be tricky. And we're almost done. Did they voice the issue or did you go to them, ask for permission? And then they said no. A random pilot reported us. As Fuck if we hell. had done something wrong. Like, these guys are flying over the lake. And we're like, yeah. You know, <laughs> FAA Part 103 regulates. The FAA came back and said they're breaking no rules. But the Army Corps of Engineer said, you know, like, you can fly around. The flying part's not the problem. It's the run, the the seven feet we run on the grass. That's the part they're worried about. Yeah. Before <clears> we launch. There's nobody to talk about that. Uh, with either like if it was some something else you could go to like a little politician there and and those people are so friendly with they love having a uh, someone come in their office and have a problem that they can actually solve <laughs> if you go you go talk to a small town mayor because you can get right in there what's he doing they'll, they'll, they'll usually I fix some shit this. like that but with no. the army corps of engineers yeah whenever i was going to do something silly like I, I i um i had a pretty good relationship with the sheriff and and like both places because we were always blowing shit up and getting calls and their deputies mm -hmm. are having to come out, so it was good to to talk to those people beforehand. And but with the Army Corps of Engineers, it, that's the fucking I don't know exactly what that is, but I think it's a federal army like so, 
side quest that they're on over there to maintain that and secure that that dam over at Lake Hartwell and the lake that uh, that supports it, all that stuff. 